sometimes uh, when you're a researcher, you're looking for if you're a particular genome that you've annotated or a group of genomes that you have in Patrick, if they have a specific set of genes. Earlier, we went in and we were showing how you could use the ID mapping tool going from this paper to this data that was available. This is a direct uh, supplementary file from that paper. And we took these gene identifiers and tried to find out what they were called in Patrick. So I did that and I went into, I created using the ID mapping tool, which you can go here, services and ID mapping. I found out what those genes were called in Patrick and what their identifiers were. And if you go into the feature groups, we'll look at what that looked like. So it was this group that I created and I went into the feature view and it'll take a few minutes to load here. But while it's loading, let me describe what happens. All of the, when you do annotate genomes in Patrick and any genome that comes into Patrick, one of the things that is included in that genome are these two protein families, the local protein family and the global protein family. All the genes that belong, the local protein family is the genus specific protein family. The global protein family crosses the genus barrier. So if I look at the local family, which we call the PL fams, I can search within Brucella, which is the group we're looking at here, to see how many genes have this. This protein family will be gold for you. If I'm comparing, let's say, Brucella to Bartonella, their close relatives, the PL fam, the local family, won't help me here to look at, to see if there's something similar between the two, but the global family will. So I want to see, the question is, these particular genes, which are the lipopolysaccharide genes in Patrick, um, in Brucella, what do, uh, from specific group of genomes that I've created for Brucella, I want to see if they have these 78 protein families. So what I want to do is select them all and download this file, and I want to download it into Excel first. Okay, so I'm going to create this file, and I'll bring this up so you all can see it. And when you download this data in Excel, I know it's really messy, but here I have the genus-specific families, and here I have the protein-specific families. So the, the question I'm asking is, I've got a group of Brucella genomes that I'm interested in. Do they have these protein families do they have these genes across this genome that are involved in building the lipopolysaccharide um, coat that Brucella uses? So how do I find that out? Well, let's go back to Patrick. And I'm just gonna go from the home page here. Let's click on services and let's click on the protein family sorter. And this is a tool that allows you to look for presence and absence of protein families across up to 400 genomes. Earlier, I created a group of genomes here, and I called it the Brucella test genomes. So I'm going to select that. I did it by the drop down box and move it over. I could also add in a genome that I was interested in in. Uh, if I wanted to in Patrick. And so let's, I could just start typing in off Natha. And so it's gonna try, it's a smart selector and it's gonna try to find the genes that, or the genomes that are close to that. So you know, there are a couple here. I This BO1 strain is interesting. And that makes me remember that there's a strain called BO2 in Brucella that's a very interesting genome to look at. And there I don't, the little um, 
lock there tells me it's a private genome and I was working, we actually published this genome, so that was when I was originally working on it, but I want to see the public genome here and bring that over. So that's a way you can add individual genomes or your private data to this. Now, and let's say you have another group that you created a long time ago and you can't remember what it's called. Well, you can't remember if you, I drop, if I do the drop down box, this shows me the most recent ones, but I've created a lot of groups in Patrick. So remember I called this one 40 Genomes Brucella. Let's add that over, just for fun. Some of these things might overlap, we'll see. Now you can select the family type. Patrick has the genus-specific families, which are the PL fams, the cross-genus families, which are the PG fams, and the fig fams. Uh, let's do the PL fams, because these should all be Brucella, and then you hit search. And so we'll just wait for this to load. Sometimes this takes a little bit of time to do, but let me describe what you're going to see here. The first page that's open is the protein family table, and it also has a dynamic filter that will be, um, that you can, will be able to see here on the left. And then the table here will show all the protein family information. And I will just, we'll just wait for, for it to load. It'd be nice if there was a little, maybe Patrick should have a musical interlude to make the load, make the weight better. Okay, so here are the, it tells me up here that it was 45 genomes. Now remember I did a few groups and stuff, but the, and some of, there was some overlap between the two. And that shows me that across all of those 49 genomes, there are 5,997 protein families. I don't wanna see all of those. I want to see the LPS genes. So I can go here, and I can grab, go down and cut and paste these unique identifiers, which are the genus-specific families for Brucella, for the LPS genes. And I put it in the box here, and scroll down and then click filter. And there, now I see the 78 results. I can see that some of the genomes have multiple copies of particular genes, and a lot of them have one-to-one -one copies of those 78 genes. And as I scroll down, I see some of them only have a couple of them. So how do I find out who has those things? Well, if I was interested in this, I could click on this and I would be able to see the members of this. So when you click on something in the table, in the, in the, table, the green bar tells you different things you can do with it. Um, so that's one way to do it, but my favorite way is if I can get this thing to scroll up, there we go, is up here, I like to look at the heat map view that we have for that. So let's click on heat map, and you need to have Adobe Flash installed to be able to see this, and on this side are the genomes, so I can open this up, and see all the different genomes in Patrick. And you could scroll down over here to see who those were up across my group. And you can see presence and absence of particular genes. And I could open, use this slider, and open the top and see who the protein families are across that. And here are the ones that aren't broadly shared across that. Now, what do these colors mean? We can look at the, <clears throat> the legend here, and if I click on it, I can see that when the color of the cell is black, it means that it's missing the protein family. When it's yellow, it means it has one copy. If it's this orangish color, it means it's got two copies, and if it's this reddish tangerine, it means three or more. So here's one more fun thing we can do with those. 
this close it all up to make a nice view. And then we could cluster the protein families if we wanted to, to see if they was finding any particular groups within that selection. And <clears throat> so you can see that these guys are missing all these, these genomes. And look at the blue bar up here when I'm mousing over this. So these particular genomes, which is VO2, the Pac-Man genome, and some of the frog isolates are all missing these important genes that are all, actually I know these are all part of the genes that are used to build the O antigen of the LPS. Some of these genomes have these particular genes, which are a different, they're different LPS genes, O antigen genes, that these particular genomes have that everybody else lacks. And so that is a very cool way to be able to go from a paper, get the list of genes, and then see their presence and absence using the protein family sorter across a subset of all the genomes and patrick that you're interested in.